Here's a quick demo of some of the updates we've been making to our AI interviewing simulator. So if you'll recall, we start off by defining the customer that the student wants to interview. So let's say I want to interview dog owners who feel scared and anxious that they, when they see their dog gaining weight because they want their dog to live a long and happy and healthy life. And they want to type in where they're going to uh, interview their customers. So at a dog park. Okay. So now we, we give the students the questions they want to ask during their interviews. Uh, so those are all here. And then we give them the chance to actually practice asking those questions. So can you tell me what a normal week looks like for you as a dog owner? As a dog owner, my normal week is filled with love, laughter, and responsibilities. Each day starts with a walk or Okay, so students obviously can listen to the responses, um, but I'm going to just skip those for now for the sake of time. But I'm going to ask a number of questions here, and you'll see that I'll ask some good questions and some less ideal questions. What's the biggest challenge you face as a dog owner? So finding the right balance between work, personal life, and taking care of my furry friend. Can you tell me a story about the last time you had trouble balancing your work, personal life, and taking care of your dog? So I had a particularly busy uh, week at work, multiple deadlines, personal commitments. I felt guilty for not being able to spend quality time with my dog. I noticed him becoming restless. It sounds like you felt guilty uh, for not being able to spend time with Max. Any other emotions come up for you when you have a hard time balancing your work life and responsibilities as a dog owner? So guilt, sadness and frustration. Okay, great. I'm trying to build a fitness tracker for dogs to help notify you when your dog isn't getting enough exercise. Is this something you would buy? So that's obviously an example of a not ideal question. Sounds intriguing. This is what a customer might say. This is great. Okay. So now what, let's pretend that I've asked all my interviews and I'm all done. Your student can go down there and click, I finished my interview and then we'll start analyzing their interview. So you can see that out of your five statements for what we're going to do, sorry, I should say the analysis we're going to start with is just the number of questions they asked. We know that there's a minimum of nine questions in the script. And ideally, we're going to have our students ask about multiple problems. So we'd be looking for when you sort of parse these out, you're, you're looking for around 21 questions would be a minimum. Um, of what we'd be looking for. So but in this case, we say, hey, we got five statements here four are effectively designed to gather information about the customer. So, and then we list out like, here are the effective statements that, uh, that you asked. So can you tell me what a normal week looks like for you? What's the biggest challenge you face? And then here it's, an, it's analyzed and says, this is a non-effective statement. I'm trying to build a fitness tracker for dogs to help notify. So it actually, it notified, it, it picked out the bad question here. Uh, and sort of calls that out for student and it tells them why the statement is not effective because it shifts your, fo your focus towards selling a product rather than continuing to discover insights. Okay, the next thing we're going to analyze is the number of follow up questions. So questions that relate to what the customer has just said. So like sort of connecting the dots, probing for more additional information here. So here, uh, this says we're not looking for every question to be a follow up question. It's just giving a students a sense of like, how well are you doing probing for additional information as opposed to just reading from a script. And in this case, we uh, have classified two of these as follow up questions. And then three of these are not follow up questions, which is again is okay. We're just sort of we want to make sure that students are getting a sense and are encouraged to ask probing follow up questions in addition to the ones that may be on the script. And then number of open ended questions. Um, again, it has identified that four out of the five are good open ended questions, but the last one is not. Um, so these, this is sort of the beginning of our analysis phase where we're implementing ways to help give feedback 
to students on the quality of the interview. So now they're not just getting the chance to practice the interviews, they're getting feedback on the quality of questions that they are asking. All right, so once we've done this analysis, now your students have actually a way to turn this into you. So they can click update your presentation or build their presentation and it will give them, build a little presentation for them that right? summarizes the customer they interviewed. And then they can turn this in. So they click this URL and they can email it, they can submit it to a learning management system. Uh, but once they do, then they will, uh, then you'll be able to see this view. So you'll get a view where you see a summary of who it is that they were trying to interview. You'll get the full transcript of the conversation. So you can look back and see exactly what questions they asked. And then you'll see this analysis as well. So you'll be able to see the number of questions they've asked, the follow-up questions and open-ended questions. So you'll be able to get a really good and in-depth insight into the quality of your students' interviews. So if this is something that you'd like to play around with more or you would like to use with your students, just let me know. And of course, if you have any other feedback, uh, we'd love to hear that as well. Cheers.